Welcome to Electron Online. Now we'll try our hand on a problem like this. It's a simple Atwood machine, but instead of what we normally see where we have a pulley that has no mass at all, here we have a pulley that has mass and therefore it has a moment of inertia, which means we can't solve it the, the, the traditional way. We have to take into account that we have to deal with angular acceleration, torque and so forth, which means we're going to need the following equation. It is the F equals MA equivalent, or I should say it's the rotational equivalent of F equals MA, which means torque is equal to the moment of inertia times angular acceleration. What's causing the torque here? It's the tension in the string on both sides. Here T1 again is not equal to T2, and it's the difference in the tensions that causes the torque about the pulley. Notice T1 is pulling in this direction, T2 is pulling in this direction, T2 is assumed, to, is assumed to be larger than T1, therefore there will be a net torque in a clockwise direction. The torque then will be equal to the torque aiding the acceleration, which is T2 times the radius of the pulley. Again, the torque is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, which is the radius of the pulley right there. And we subtract from that the torque which opposes the acceleration, which is caused by T1 times R. And that would then be T1 times R equals the moment of inertia of the pulley. It's a solid disk. One half times the mass times the radius squared times the angle of acceleration, which can be written as A divided by R. Again, the relationship is that the linear acceleration is equal to the radius times the angle of acceleration, which means the angle of acceleration is equal to A divided by R, so we can make the substitution. Again, we're going to simplify this by realizing on the left side we have an R that cancels out with one of the R's on the right side. And, and this R in the numerator cancels out this R in the denominator. And the equation then becomes T2 minus T1 is equal to 1 half times the mass of the pulley times the acceleration of the system. In this equation, we have three unknowns. We have acceleration, T1, and T2, which means we need two additional equations to figure out what to do here. The two equations come from considering the two masses separately. Let's take a look at mass 1. We can say that F equals MA. And all the forces on mass 1, let's see here, we have a force in this direction caused by the force of gravity, M1G. And then we have T1 pulling upward. Relative to M1, T1 is pulling in an upward direction. Since we know the acceleration is this way, we assume that T1 is larger than M1G. Therefore, the net force is equal to T1 minus M1G equals the mass of that, which is M1 times acceleration. Solving this for T1, we get T1 is equal to M1A plus M1G. And this can then be substituted in this equation right here to eliminate T1. We can do the same for T2. We can write again that F equals MA. Again, we have a force due to gravity. Oh, there goes my red pen. Here's a force due to gravity, which is M2G which we assume to be larger than T2, which is pulling upward relative to M2. If this is larger than this, acceleration will be downward. So the net force is M2G minus T2, which is equal to the mass M2 times acceleration. Solving this for T2, I can move that to the other side, move this over here. We can say that M2G minus M2A equals T2, and that can then be substituted in the equation over there, eliminating both T1 from here and T2 with this equation. T2 can be written as M2G minus M2A. Subtract from that T1, which is equal to M1A, and you also subtract M1G. And this is equal to 1 half the mass of the pulley times acceleration. Now notice the equation only has one unknown left, the acceleration. It's in this term, this term, and this term, so we want all those terms to be on one side, everything else on the other side. We have M2G minus M1G is equal to, moving this across, we get M1A plus M2A plus one half the mass of the pulley times acceleration. Factoring out a G on the left side, factor out an A on the right side, we get M2 minus M1 times G is equal to M1 plus M2 
plus 1 half the mass of the pulley times acceleration. And solving this for A, we get A is equal to the left side here, which is M2 minus M1 times G divided by the coefficient of A, which is M1 plus M2 plus 1 half times the mass of the pulley. So there's the acceleration of the whole system because we have to take into account the moment of inertia of the pulley. Since we know what all the masses are, let's go ahead and plug in the numbers. We get the acceleration is equal to M2, which is 8, minus M1, which is 4, divided by M1, which is 4, plus 8, plus 1 half times the mass of the pulley, which is 5, which is equal to 4, oh, and we have to multiply times G, I can't forget G there, so it's 4 divided by 12, half times 5, it's 2.5, that's 14.5, 14.5 times G, and with a calculator, let's find out what that's equal to. 4 divided by 14.5, and we get 0 0.276. 0 0.276 times g, and that would be the acceleration of the system, Take into account that there's a pulley that has mass. And that's how we do a problem like this.